Hi, I'm John Perry with IPC. We're here with this week's technical question of the week. One of the questions that we frequently get at IPC relates to a fairly recent IPC test method for thermal stress. So one of the first thermal stress test methods that IPC ever had was test method 268. And this is a test method. It's our traditional thermal stress test method. It's pretty simple. Basically, it's just a, a 10 second solder float of a test coupon uh, in a solder pot at basically 550 degrees Fahrenheit. And this test method has been utilized within the IPC standards for many years. It was designed primarily at the time of wave solder applications for printed boards. Nowadays with uh, printed boards that go through lead free uh, as well as um, as uh, uh, printed boards that have high component density where the high component density basically results in an increase of uh, thermal mass for the test board as well as thermal stress and the number of uh, thermal excursions that the test coupon may be subjected to IPC realized that we needed a, a new test methodology that went beyond the simple 10 second solder flow test. So what IPC has done is created a new test method. The test method number is 2627. And the main difference with this one, whereas 268 was a, a solder float test, 2627 is a convection reflow simulation test where the test coupon is basically put through six cycles in a convection reflow oven. And the primary reason we do this now is we recognize that many printed boards as they go through the assembly process may be subjected to anywhere from three to six thermal cycles. It can be subjected to a wave solder cycle, a convection reflow cycle, it could be subjected to a hand soldering cycle, as well as multiple rework and repair cycles. So throughout the assembly and usage of the board, that board may be subjected to upwards of, of six thermal cycles, uh, particularly in, the, in today's lead-free environment. So we wanted to create a test method that simulated the actual thermal excursions that a printed circuit board will see uh, in its lifetime. So 2627 was created to address this. And the main features of the test method are two different thermal profiles. The first is a default which is the 260 reflow profile. And these profiles are provided in the test method. And basically they're giving uh, times for the uh, preheat condition, uh, hold times for the peak reflow temperatures, and then times for the cool down. This is the default condition, 260C. There is also a secondary profile for a lower temperature profile, which is for 230 degrees C. So with this new test method, what you're going to find is in standards such as IPC 6012, which recently had a C revision. That document and other IPC performance documents such as 6013 and 6018 when they're revised in the future. What they will now say is that the, uh, in the selection for procurement, the procurement documentation must specify a thermal test to be used for thermally stressing uh, production boards or coupons before they are microsectioned and then evaluated for integrity. And so documents such as 6012 will say the procurement documentation will either uh, indicate the traditional 10 second solder float test, which is the method 268, or will indicate one, the new test method 2627 and also require the procurement documentation to indicate whether it's the default 260 profile or the lower temperature uh, 230 degrees profile. So this is an explanation of the new test method for thermal stress. Again, that's the convection reflow assembly simulation test method, and it's designed to um, subject the test coupon to uh, actual thermal conditions that it will experience both at assembly and rework and repair. Thank you.